go. Let's go. And good morning, good afternoon, morning. good evening. We come to serve. Still nice to see you. It is the John Lavinia Success Mastermind. You know, that's one of my favorite, fa that has become one of my favorite phrases in the world. The John Lavinia Success Mastermind. I, 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 would do a, I would do a general session and do an exegesis of the name of the group, a word study, the name of the group that we're in. That would be, note to self. It is Wednesday, the 3rd of March, 2021, and I see Daisy and Kim, Julia, Suzanne, John Apogee, Cyril, how's it going, mate? Evelyn, and who else is here? Gail and, uh, oh, just Janet, Janet. Janet's pretty excited about something. I was hearing, well, as we were chatting a little bit beforehand, Linda, Sandy, Virginia Pipitone, the absolute mistress of dessert. Edward, nice to see you, Jody, Therese. Oh, hello. Front and center and my screen is uh, the laughing Irishman himself, Mr. Bill McDonald. Ace, good to see you, Mark. Lieutenant Coinal, and of course, Coral. How in the world did, did I ever miss She'd kill me if I forgot to mention. Hey, nice to see. Uh, I'm liking this color, Therese. Purple. My favorite color in the whole wide world. And of course, the man, the myth, the Godzilla. Good to see you, John. All right. Shall we get down to business? Because I want to hear from you as much as possible today. It's, a, it's an interesting topic. It, it's something that has just come up for me in the last, oh, I don't know, 12 hours or something. And then 12 years before that, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know the David Bowie song, Ch -ch 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 Changes, right? Good one. It's, it, it may be one of my favorite David Bowie songs. And it, 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 it was brought back to my memory because uh, Paula and I have made a decision recently. We have a big announcement to make uh, to, all of, to all of you. No, Mark, I'm not pregnant. Stop thinking that. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> uh, You're ready anyway. my mind, brother. <laughs> so here's the decision. We moved here to Houston six and a half years ago from Doha, Qatar in the Middle East. Some of you have heard some of that story. Someday I'll tell you the rest of the story. And it's a good one. I mean, seriously, it's a good one. Um, so we've been here six and a half years moved into this uh, city in July of 2014, the rest of the story coming, Mark, uh, bought and moved into this house on the 6th of October, 2014. Um, we've had a wonderful, wonderful time here. Absolutely adore this house. We've thought about selling a couple of times, actually listed a couple of times. First time we tried to list Hurricane Harvey. Yeah. Second time we've tried to list uh, China virus, not a fan. And so it seems like always something kept cropping up and popping up in the way. And then we were finally looking at each other and saying, hey, why, why, why are we in such a hurry to get rid of a house that we love? We really like this house, been very happy here, a lot of happy memories and everything. And uh, so then, so we kind of took it off the market and, and uh, decided to stay a while. And, and so, Naturally, um, we're sitting outside on the patio the, a couple weeks ago or so, and, and Paul says, honey, let's sell the house, move. Okay. I've always said to her, look, honey, you want to stay? You want to go? We'd actually thought about staying on this location, knocking this house down, pouring a new foundation, rebuilding from scratch. So we thought about that too. Um, and back and forth and forth and back. So selling the house and moving. We're staying in Houston. Uh, called our realtor, wonderful, wonderful lady named Carol. And I said, Carol, you know, she's, she's kind, of, kind of walked with us through some of these turns and fits and starts and everything else. And said to Carol, hey, got news. We've decided we're moving. She says, oh, great. We're selling the house. Oh, fantastic. Well, of course, I'll help you. And she says, uh, well, what changed? Uh, she says, I'm just curious. What changed? I said, Paula's mind. Uh, ladies, you know what I'm talking about? Woman's prerogative and all that, which is why 
which is why I have always said, honey, you want to stay? You want to go? You want to rebuild? Go with me. Just let me know what you want to do. Okay. Am I a smart married man or what? Do I know? I, somebody told me, you know, every now and then, and, I, and I'm, I'm about to digress now. So stick a pin in the we're selling the house thing. I'm about to digress in a big way. Um, every now and then when I'm out and about, I'll be sitting around chatting with some of the fellas and, you know, hey, Glenn, man, having trouble with my girl and, you know, my wife, blah, 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 at arguments and stuff. And, man, how do you do it? You know, not that I'm any paragon of virtue or more or like moral authority on marriage or anything. Uh, I do know something about relationships and connections and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so I said, man, can you help me? You have any suggestions? I said, hey, yeah, bro, it's real simple. Fellas, you got a piece of paper? Mark, John, Cyril, write this down. Toba, write this down. I'm about to give you the secret to happy relationship, happy marriage, happy life. You ready? Pay attention. Pay attention. What am I talking about? Not just to what she says. Not just to what she does. Pay attention to her tone of voice. Pay attention to that look in her eye. You know the look I'm talking about, right? That look in her eye. Pay attention to the look in her eye. Pay attention to her body language. Pay attention to use. You're smart. Mark, you've worked in intelligence. You've like done stuff that, you know, you could tell us, but then you'd have to kill us. Pay attention, right? Clues. Pay attention. If you pay attention, you're one thing you need to know. Ladies, am I right? By golly, so enough of the digression. We're so we're selling the house and we're moving. And you know what? I am excited beyond what I can tell you. You know, so it, it, some people, some people look at the thought of moving and oh, what a burden. This is going to be so hard. We got a box and pack and painters and the, and the this and the that and the, it just, you know, uh, uh, people say want to move. Uh, anybody ever had that reaction? Hey, honey, new job. We're moving to a new city. Uh, I love moving house. How strange am I? I love new jobs. I love, and here's the crux of the conversation. Mr. Spock once said, yeah, you knew it was coming, didn't you? The Star Trek thing's coming. Spock once said in an episode called Let That Be Your Last Battlefield, he said, change is the essential element of all existence. Say it again. Digging a hole for myself, Mark, probably. <laughs> well, here's the thing. How I got to a point where of, of knowing a, maybe a little something about relationships and all of that, almost all of my best friends in the world are women. And so I can tell you right now, you want to keep a friendship with a woman, you're behind, better pay attention. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, now, pain is the essential element of all existence. What does that mean? It means that when things change, nature is taking its course. When things change, change is the usual thing. You try, you're starting to get what I mean? Change is not weird. Change is not an upheaval. Change is not what like what's wrong what's wrong with my life everything's up in the air it's all changing i, I can't spit. change is how life is supposed to be so when people say oh everything's changing wait 
It means you are living your best life. It means the universe is unfolding as it should. So, so where do we go from here? You've seen it in your own life, haven't you? You know, everything changes. You lost your job. Oh boy, that's a change, isn't it? Somebody got sick. Don't wish it on anyone. That's a change. Got a new job, got to move. That's a change. You were so hooked up and all in with this company and going all the way, man, I'm gonna build a huge business and poof. Company goes away, declares bankruptcy. Oh boy, is that a change? I'm here to tell you that all of those things, again, we don't wish illness or catastrophe on anyone. I will say that my good friend, John Lavinia has a favorite phrase about when things change, even when things happen in our lives that appear to be disasters. Anybody remember John's favorite phrase? When stuff changes, when all the marbles get tossed up and all the balls get tossed up in the air and you have, have no idea, what does John say? What an opportunity. Glenn, you're crazy. What are you talking about? I just lost my job. My entire income just fell out. It was just fell out from under my feet. What are you talking about? Are you insane? What are you talking about? What an opportunity. Why? Well, I've been there with jobs and income collapsing. And you know what happens at that point? For example, you lose a job, you lose an income, business goes away. You know where you are? You are at the perfect place to design and redesign your life exactly as you would like it to be. So you just lost your job. What an opportunity. Something happened to the house. What an opportunity. And I get to put in that stuff that I've been meaning to do, but never got around. Getting excited, and I can see in some eyes, I'm not going to point out to anybody, I can see, Henderson, don't you understand how terrible it was, what happened to me? Getting excited about change, getting excited about what appears to be a bad outcome will make you look insane to other people. Like, what's wrong with you? Don't you realize how bad this is? Try this out one time. Somebody says to you, don't you realize how bad this is, what happened? And say back to them, don't you realize what an opportunity you have right now? What an opportunity you have to redesign your life. What an opportunity you have to take an entirely new direction in your life and see where it takes you. Don't you get that crossroads are always a good place to be? Because you get to make choices. You get to do new things. You get to go new places. Holy smokes. Couple action steps and then I'm gonna shut up. Okay, action step number one. Don't be surprised by change. L expect it. Expect everything to change all the time. because it will, simple as that. Once you think you've got everything locked in, oh boy, don't hold your breath. Because all the balls are about to get tossed in the air. And that's good news. Number two, actually look for change. Look for things, don't just expect it. Don't just say, okay, it's all gonna change. Glenn said so. 
everything's going to change. I guess I'll just have to deal with it. Look for things to change. Look for opportunities to change things. What's a different way to do this? Who's a different vendor I can work with? This vendor is great. Who else can we work with? Oh, yeah. Just started working with this guy, this couple, new business partner. Fantastic. Let me go find somebody else to work with. Who else can I work with? Who else can I help? Which, by the way, it's Wealth Wednesday today. Remember Wealth Wednesday? Random act of kindness for a complete stranger involving a financial exchange. Who can you help today? Okay. End of commercial. Third step, third action step. Get excited about when things change. Get excited. And I mean mentally, emotionally. Get fired up when things change. Why? Because that will put you into a state of gratitude. I am so thankful that my universe is unfolding as it should. Stuff's changing again. And gratitude brings us into alignment with infinite intelligence, which opens up the floodgates of heaven to bring all the great opportunities our way. It sounds insane. Change. Everything's changing. It's all going to get tossed up in the air. Good. Change is the essential element of all existence. So don't be surprised when change comes. Look for change to come. Get excited when things are changing and use those moments of up, those times of upheaval. Use the bouncing of the balls up in the air. Use that as an opportunity to uplevel your skills because you're go, you're, if, if, if you're about to get a new job, you're probably gonna to need to learn a whole bunch of new stuff. If the old business went out the window and you've got to start a new one, you're probably going to need to upgrade your skills, right? You're probably going to need to learn some new systems, learn some new details and numbers and plans. And the more skills you have, the more easily you'll be able to adapt to change when it comes back around the corner. It will come back around the corner and you'll be better able to handle it. Because, well, for one thing, you'll be calmer. Oh, it's changing. Cool. Yeah. What an opportunity. Yeah. The, the year we've had, I know, I've said this to other people. I've, I've shared this with other people. Glenn, you, you don't understand the 2020 I had. Man, the shit that happened to me. Would you want that to happen to you? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe. It was presented to you as an opportunity to change your perspective. Maybe it was presented to you as an opportunity to say, you know what? It's about darn time for me to do something about my health, finally. Maybe it was an opportunity for you to say, you know what? Why in the hell was I so dependent on that one job, that one paycheck, instead of taking my financial future into my own hands? You built something and it collapsed. Perhaps it was presented to you as an opportunity to say, okay, I built this thing and it collapsed. It didn't feel nice. What could I have done better to continue to build and to continue to grow my enterprise? What did I miss that caused it to collapse? Because I can tell you, in at least in my life, virtually 100% of the business reverses and failures and collapses that I've had 
just about all of them were caused by one thing. What did I miss? What could I have done better? What am I going to do next time to keep this from happening again? So look for change, celebrate it, and use the upheaval as an opportunity to upgrade your skills, which will leave you better prepared for the next change. I really do hope that this has made sense to someone that you've been able to grab some value from this uh, because I know, uh, by the way, uh, bonus point here. You know that I'm pretty good at networking. It's my thing. I'm a, I'm a professional networker. Okay, let's just say that. I'm a professional networker. Part of the reason why I'm networking is one of the things that I'm pretty good at is that I love change. I love going new places, doing new things, meeting new people, having starting new conversations. Put me in a room with a, a room packed full with people, none of whom I've ever met. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find the biggest crowd in the room. I'm going to wade right sideways, slide right into the middle, stick my hand out. Hey, I'm Glenn. How you doing? Why? This is a, gosh, this is a cornucopia of new conversations, of new relationships, new experiences, new people to get to know. And I just get a buzz. I get an absolute, I, I've come to the place in my life where I get an absolute buzz from meeting new people, doing new things. Go for it. Change is coming. Look for it. Get excited about it. Look for opportunities. Use it as an opportunity to up-level your skills and look for the opportunities to meet new people, to start new conversations, to build, create and build new relationships. Boy, am I, boy, am I buzzed. We're moving, man. This is cool. <laughs> hey, who's got a comment? Somebody says we thrive on change. Coral, first hand up. How you doing, ma'am? I'm fine, thank you, Glenn. Excellent. Brilliant. A great topic. And while you were talking, I was thinking about all the changes that have occurred in my life, and I'm sure Gail would um, experience this too, coming from the other side of the world to a new country. Um, and we came from New Zealand to to England, and I thought we spoke the same language. <laughs> uh, actually, I got here and I found that we don't. Yeah. And um, the mentality is quite different. And I had to kind of drop a lot of the, um, you know, the New Zealand and Aussie sayings because they didn't understand me here in this country. <laughs> so, yeah, new experiences and new languages that we had to learn. And, of course, these new opportunities. Now, when we moved from New Zealand, <clears throat> being young and silly and adventurous, I had three babies, three young ones. Um, my eldest was like eight or nine, and mm -hmm. I was seven months, seven months pregnant with number four. So we had to fly then, otherwise they wouldn't let us on the plane in those days. Um, and so, you know, you find out what you're made of. You haven't got mum and dad around you and your family around you. You find out what your backbone is made out of. Uh, so that was a huge change. But you know, um, somebody says that if you don't create change, change will create you. Ooh, that's I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember who it was that said that. Oh. But I, I realized that actually all the good things in my life are the results of the changes that occurred in the past. All of them. My grandchildren, you know, all my all, being here with you lot are the changes that occurred in the past have created those wonderful things. 
and uh, one of our biggest um, learning experiences was, you know, having moved from New Zealand to England. And then when we were here, we thought, well, let's go move to Europe. So we went to live in Bulgaria, new language, new mentality. We went to live in Greece, new language, whole new alphabet. Um, yeah, and a different mm -hmm. mentality again. Uh, Montenegro, oh, back to the Bulgarians, back to the Cyrillic mm -hmm. um, alphabet, uh, you know, and then now we've come back to, to England. Wow. And, um, but yeah, huge changes. But actually, when you said you were you were selling the house, immediately my first thought was, oh my God, let's hope he doesn't have lots of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really good time to get rid of stuff. And but thank you, Glenn. That was great, and um, yeah, lots of lots of um, experiences have happened because of the changes that Absolutely. have happened in our life. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Coral. That wow. Now I thought we had balls tossed up in the air. Holy moly! All those countries, all those languages, pretty amazing. And, and yeah, and by the way, um, we have boatloads of stuff. It's going to be really interesting getting all these things into the bottle, into the boxes and, and parting them all over to the next place and, and all that. Uh, that. I was just noticing in the chat that the, the quote that Kim dropped, change begins at the end of your comfort zone. That's where the map, I like to say that's where the magic happens. The magic happens just outside of my comfort zone. I would love to hear something I would love to hear something from anyone of you, any one of us about a change that you thought at the time felt like the end of the world. And now you may have a different perspective. Um, well, I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> I had, um, I think I'd mentioned the story before about um, where I, where I ended up in the Middle East, um, no job, no visa, no passport, man without a country. Remember, I mentioned that a couple of weeks back. It seemed like a horrible experience at the time. It seemed like, um, well, kind of like the end of the world, kind of like, well, who really cares about me? You know what I mean? Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happened. I thought it was horrible. It turned out to be really quite an opportunity and quite beneficial because for one thing, I found out who my real friends were, which is always good information to have, isn't it, Mark? It's good to have, to know who's got your back, truly has got your back. And I found out, and many of those people from all those years ago, remain close friends of mine to this day so it was an important lesson for me to learn and it, there have been so many other experiences uh, i'll tell you another one uh, that that many of us may be familiar with uh, may have experienced in the past i thought at one time the fact that I was about to get divorced was just about the worst thing in the world. Um, if you've ever been through uh, the death of a marriage, I, I think of it that way. Um, I, I learned a lot of important lessons through that whole process. Uh, <laughs> one of which is get a better lawyer next time. <laughs> I, I can only afford to get divorced once, I'll tell you right now. Um, one of the important lessons I learned is that, believe it or not, you know, coming from the sort of background that I came from, it was hard for me to, to get to the realization that divorce is, is it's not really a good thing. Sometimes it's not the worst thing, if you know what I mean. Um, escape from an abusive relationship, for, for an example. Uh, or, or you get you get a point, you know those those silly old phrases. Well, we just grew apart. You know what? That actually does happen. 
And when that happens, as I said, in those, in some of those instances, divorce is not always the worst thing because now two people get to pursue new opportunities, not just new relationships, but they get to pursue new directions in life. And that's always a good thing. New directions, as, as we know. Um, I joined, um, as, you, as, as, as I've mentioned before, I've joined um, a huge networking organization, a world global uh, networking organization um, called BNI. As some, some have heard of it, it's, called business, it's a business networking international and absolutely been loving it. It's made, worked wonders for me, not just in my business, but in my life, in my relationships, connections with people. All of a sudden, I'm being approached by people with BNI corporate about taking a more active role sort of at the corporate leadership level. What? Where'd this come from? I was just looking to pick up some new customers, grow my business, and maybe make some connections with people. And now they wanted me to, boy, what a change. And, and I'm thinking about the, when, when, when they were approaching me and asking me, you know, would you be interested in doing this or doing that? You know, we'd love to have you. Um, I was reminded of that saying, quote, I think it's uh, Sir Richard Branson, right? If you're offered an amazing opportunity and you're not sure you can do it and you're not sure how to do it, say yes and figure out how to do it later. So that's pretty much where I am right now. And you know, it occurs to me that that may be part of the reason why so many people fear change or they get nervous when things change, when the balls get tossed up in the air, because how am I going to handle this? I don't know how to do this new job. I got to go do something else. I got to do a new, take a new job and learn. And I've got to, and I've got to start with all over again with a new business or with a new company? Well, yeah. So say yes, and then figure it out. Boy, how exciting. How exciting that will be. What else? Any other, any other thoughts? It, it seems um, we, may, we may end up with a slightly shorter session today, which is perfectly fine. Um, I know that... I know that um, John is an absolute master at adapting to changes, to new things. And part of the inspiration that I've drawn from John over the years is in watching a guy who pivots probably quicker than anybody I've ever seen. I mean, I've seen this dude, I'm bragging about you, <laughs> I've seen this dude, like, lose huge amounts of money, and the next week is crushing something else. Seriously. Why? Well, I wouldn't presume to speak for him. I know that in my own life, when I when I when I have seen things fall out from under me, and then have been able to adapt and pivot and move in another direction, it was because, at least in part, I got excited about the fact that things were changing. Now that doesn't happen overnight; it takes a little minute. But uh, you know, it, a lot of this is down to our mental state, isn't it? Our state of mind, our attitude. So, which is why I meant to suggested that we get excited when we see balls being tossed up in the air. John, what say you, sir? Thanks, Glenn. Uh, great topic. Uh, if it occurs to you that I've been resilient, it's it's just a choice to be resilient. I, I think, um, and we've talked about uh, a couple different approaches to this. One is. Um, as we accumulate losses in life, we can identify with or as those losses and as the failure. Um, 
and and then you know the other thing we could do in fact i was just having this conversation with uh some business colleagues yesterday the other thing we could do is um we can reinterpret that we can we can interpret anything anything in life any way we want mm -hmm. and it could be an indicator that you know one door closes and another opens right so so i'm um sometimes sometimes because i don't like or I'm, I've been resistant to change. Sometimes I've, I've lamented the door closing or the, you know, the so-called loss or failure or whatever it was because it was comfortable who moved my cheese. Right. So now my <laughs> cheese got moved. And, uh, and so one of the things that, that I was talking about yesterday with some people is, is interpreting every win as something that I caused interpreting, interpreting like in sales. Right. And anytime somebody buys, it's cause I'm a great closer. I'm freaking awesome. Me, me, me. Right. So kind of assigning, you know, the award and the responsibility and the control to myself. Anytime somebody doesn't buy, well, they're having a bad day. You know, it's, it, you know, their, their situation, they're uh, clearly not, uh, you know, today is something's happening for them. I'm awesome, you know, but them, right. So, so that's actually, you can find that in, there's a book I read that in too, that, that sort of a, that sort of approach, right. Of reinterpreting why somebody buys or doesn't buy. Um, but but the idea that that uh, that we have habits, I think that's the thing, Glenn. We have habits. You're about to go have to figure out which light switch, you know, turns on which light, man. Like peril, perilous. Um, you, you're opting for such peril. Um, and any time I've moved, you know, moved house, for example, I've had to go through such perilous conditions. I survived, right? But I think. Uh, back to the whole idea of interpreting, right? Or adding meaning to stuff, right? Interpreting things with meaning. What does it mean now that I've got a new a new gig, a new business, which I chose by the way, right? I may not have chosen, like you said before, that other company hit the rocks, which is by the way, why I'm building my own stuff now too, right? So so there are some things that I would consider more stable than others as far as, far as like third party offers and and you know product providers and things like that. Same with our, our people here who are uh, endeavoring on e-commerce and Amazon and and all this. There are uh, certain sources of products which you might consider more of a long-term relationship with. Um, however, I think any any great example, any great example of someone who's who has made their mark in e-commerce or in uh, product creation, uh, uh, you know, coaching, right? All, all different things that we're involved in here are people who have found a way. They find a way. They find a way. It, it's, not, it's not just, you know, here's, here's the way because I bought the course and I may have paid a lot for the course. I've invested over $300,000 into my own education, over 300,000. So I, I definitely bought the course, but how do you apply it? You know, people can read the book, and do nothing, right? The purpose of education isn't to cause you to just think different, it's to cause you to behave different. So my behavior must be one of a person who stands up and not just sit, sits down, sometimes literally and physically, you know, stand up, right? Get the energy moving. I, I think uh, so often when we're faced with like COVID, like the COVID thing, right? So, so here's an opportunity at a crisis, right? They go hand in hand. And I see so many people just sitting in a state of apathy, you know, my, my cheese just got moved or, you know, that I can't show up at the office to sit in a cubicle anymore because, you know, of COVID or something. What was me? It's like, holy crap. Um, our stats are up. Up. Right. Because we, we adapted, we overcame, we, we, we did something. We stood up, stood up. And I think most people are like a giant drowning in three feet of water, right? You just got to stand up. <laughs> But it requires a bit of a bit of self-belief back to the original point, right? If I'm identified as my problems, my, my failures, my losses, then how able am I? Well, however able I interpret myself to be. All this meaning, man. You know, so so I was just reading a, a quote from from a great philosopher today who talked about the more you sit and think about something, the more you're introducing physical world conditions. Uh, you know, circumstances, right? You're thinking with physical world stuff, right? You get an idea, you act on the idea. Don't sit there and keep pounding yourself with all this deliberation about, about secondary 
causes, right? Primary cause right here, right? So, and that's pretty heavy duty, right? But yeah, we get into the flow, we stand up, we have energy, we tend to, we tend to find ourselves in, in um, spontaneous right action. Man, I love spontaneous right action. I freaking love it. I love it, you know, it, and, and I've experienced it from time to time, you know, I like to experience it more. If there's any habit that I'd want to develop, it's the habit of not sitting there and thinking so much and, and getting, mm. just getting on with it, right? Grant Cardone said, best known beats best. He, he knows he doesn't put out the best content in the world, right? I mean, it's okay, but my goodness, the guy's everywhere, <laughs> you know, best known right. beats best. Do it. That's back to you. Thanks. Listen, this is a great conversation, man. Um, yep. Spontaneous right action. What you, what you, what you said. I take that to mean when I'm presented with a great idea, act now, and then figure out the rest of it along the way. Is that is that about right, John? Spontaneous right action. Well, yeah. I mean, you get you get. Uh... In my case, a lot of times it's it's been it's been um, on the micro sense, right? Mm. Uh, what what prospect, what lead, what uh, potential client am I calling right now? I just got them in my mind. I called them right now. Yes. And and close the deal and serve the customer, right? So that was a timing thing. That was uh, I don't know from the ethers. I got <laughs> Bob Smith's name, and I'm thinking I haven't talked to Bob in a while. Call Bob, call Bob right now, call Bob right now. Don't sit and think with it, just do it. Yeah, right? hey so Bob, how you a, doing? Right, so that's mm -hmm. on a micro sense, right? And not thinking about it so much doesn't allow me to have all this evaluation and, and anticipation and attachment to it, right? Um, now on a bigger, in a bigger sense, here's an opportunity, right? Here's a way to, to uh, spend the next, who knows, 10 years of your life uh, a big, big project, right? A big opportunity. Glenn, you and I have seen this, right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, there are times when, um, you know, I just, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I like it. I like it. I'm not even sure why I like it. I got to go sell it to myself here a little bit, but I like it mm -hmm. and I've done it. And, um, and, and by the way, that hasn't always been comfortable, right? Being in the flow with this stuff doesn't necessarily mean that that, you know, I've got comfort 100% of the time. Um, yeah, but but it's almost like, you know, you get good advice sometimes from people and, and it's like just with their, their level of, um, and hopefully people experience that here in this mastermind group too. Uh, not to put myself on a pedestal. I've studied a lot about how how human performance, you know, the mind and, and uh, psychology and all this, I've studied a lot on that. And so if I give you an idea, a concept, an axiom, something, right? That you, you're you like, well, you know what? I, I haven't seen this play out in my life yet. Of course, I haven't engaged in it, but this guy's saying it. Let me just act on it. Spontaneous right action because of the suggestion of another. And look, all my great breakthroughs, and I've had a few, have come via the catalyst of another or others, right? It hasn't been John the Island. You know, I, I got struck with the friggin' lightning and came down with the tablets from the, the mount or something, right? At least not yet. But, um, but, you know, I, there's, guess what? There's wisdom. What did Go Goethe say? He said, all intelligent thoughts have already been thought. All we got to do is think them again. So, so <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I don't have to, I don't have to like originate some new truth or something. Right. But when I get, when I get guidance, act on the guidance, damn it. So that could be on a bigger sense. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Thank you. You know, it occurs to me, John, and, and, and unless uh, there's another thought, it occurs to me that I just remembered spontaneous right action is how you and I met in the first place. Because you remember we were, we, we were working with you and me and I'm another mutual friend of ours. And, uh, and I'd heard about you guys. And I said, you know what, let me, uh, let me check this out. It looks good. And, and then you told, told me about some of your results. And I thought, I have no idea. What, what I'm what I'm about to do here and, and what it's all but you know what let's do it and here we are and and we remain connected and now we get to participate in this group of geniuses yes and this is a genius group why masculine that's why 
I love it. I absolutely love this. And um, so I've got okay. a spontaneous request right now. Go for it. So if anyone's feeling inspired, uh, I am putting together a whole new front end for, for this mastermind group. And I could use uh, your feedback, like whatever, like what experience did you have here? We could call that a testimonial, right? So, so like, what have you gotten here? Why are you members here? Please send me an email, uh, a little video or write it out, something, right? Um, send me, send me like, why are we here? Why are we doing this? What have you gotten from this? And, and the more, the more um, before and after stuff you can include in that, like specificity, I think of course, uh, people like, um, like Ivier, right? So Ivier had all this advancement in her, her work, right? She just moved into a friggin' castle. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's good, tangible stuff. Other people want to move into castles. Well, join the friggin' mastermind group then. You'll learn how to move into castles. So, so I'm looking for, I'm looking for fodder. <laughs> Send me stuff. <laughs> Contact at johnlavenia.com. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, yeah. And, and by the way, don't forget Wealth Wednesday. Go find somebody to do something nice for today. Uh, preferably, don't let them know it's you. <laughs> very, very cool feeling when you do that. And uh, if you've got a prompting to do something, just go freaking do it. Just go do it. And then figure it out later. If you offered an opportunity, take it. Figure it out later. It's so much fun chatting with you all. This has been the John Lavinia Success Mastermind. And I'm going to grab a red right over here and we'll have a review of what's coming up on the calendar before we say good day. Uh, good day. It's Wednesday. Hospitality suite open right after us. Books for Britain with Mandy Anderson at 2 Eastern. Life and business tools at 6 Eastern with the very right Reverend Adrian Garner. And then I'll be back with you this evening. Networking magic. I've got a pretty groovy uh, thought to, to think with you this evening. A cash flow. The very right reverend tells us. You want to learn something about cash flow? Get on the life and business tools this evening. My friends, it has been a pleasure. Go change stuff. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.